we've got three terrific speakers, John Robertson, Louise Tarrant and Rebecca Huntley. Um, John, for those who weren't here at the beginning, uh, probably doesn't need an introduction, but of course he is the um, Leader of the Opposition in New South Wales and previously the Secretary of Unions New South Wales. Louise Tarrant is the National Secretary of United Voice, one of Australia's largest unions, and Rebecca Huntley is a social researcher at Ipsos Research. Um, so I won't make further introductions, I'll ask them to come to the microphone one by one. And at the end of it all, we're looking for a really robust and uh, interesting um, discussion from the floor and between the panellists. Thanks, Jenny. Could I begin by acknowledging the traditional owners and pay my respects to their elders past and present? On the 27th of March, New South Wales Labor was wiped out in our worst electoral defeat in living memory. A defeat that saw us lose seats that had never been held by any other party than Labor. In a number of electorates, we saw strong, principled Labor candidates fall to lacklustre Liberal MPs, who in many cases had run five times and failed, and finally got their chance at a parliamentary career on the back of a wave of electoral discontent. In the aftermath of a defeat of this magnitude, there comes the inevitable struggle to understand how things got so bad especially when the defeat comes on the back of a federal election that saw Labor very nearly become the first one-term government since 1929. Everyone wants to understand where did Labor go wrong? How could we have offended the electorate so completely? Much of today's discussion will centre on Labor values. Do we know what they are? Can we articulate them? And was it losing touch with these values that saw Labor's primary vote plummet and the electorate comprehensively abandoned Labor in New South Wales, and to a lesser extent on a, na on a national basis. Only four days after the New South Wales state election, the Prime Minister addressed the Whitlam Institute on values. And she said, and I quote, I am absolutely clear what Labor stands for, what we aspire to achieve, what our culture is, and our role as a party of government. The historic mission of our political party is to ensure the fair distribution of opportunity. Now it's true Labor has long-standing intrinsic values that those of us in this room know instinctively. But in recent years I believe those values have been suppressed and Labor has struggled to argue in favour of those values. This happened for three reasons. First, we started to doubt, our legitima doubt the legitimacy of those values. And so we gave ground where we didn't need to and we shouldn't have. Second, we stopped persuading and leading the public on the issues that mattered. And worst, we followed. And thirdly, we lost our connection with the people we exist to represent and allowed the structures that are meant to be there to feed our agenda to decay to the point they could no longer function effectively. If Labor is to strengthen its position in Australia's political landscape, we need to have the courage of our convictions and we need to stand our ground. Now that's not always easy, but it's the right thing to do. After 12 years of a Conservative government led by John Howard, Labor was browbeaten and deflated. Howard demolished Labor on the economy. He argued things like to support unions was to be an economic vandal and he labelled unions as just another vested interest group. Howard demolished Labor on immigration and argued that to support the humanitarian treatment of refugees was akin to supporting terrorism. In many ways, Howard made Labor, Labor people feel that arguing in favour of Labor values was illegitimate. So we gave ground, and in my view, we're yet to recover. Whether it was conscious or not, Labor politicians vacated the space. We let ourselves be pushed around. We bought into the conservative arguments instead of making our own. I want to take the economy as one of those examples. Labor governments have been shown to be strong economic managers. And most recently, the Rudd government stimulus plan saved Australia from the impacts of the global financial crisis. This is something we should be proud of. But for Labor, unlike the conservatives, a strong economy is important because it leads to secure, well-paying jobs for working people, because it allows us to improve public services, because it means we can invest in education, in health care, in public transport, so that we can deliver on our mission to ensure the fair distribution of opportunity. A strong economy 
is a means to an end, not the end in itself. But too often, we've fallen into the trap. We've had fights about who would deliver the biggest surplus, rather than who will use that surplus to deliver better services. Recently, one of my favourite columnists wrote uh, an article and he referred to what he called truisms of politics, and I'll quote it. When you do have principles, half the people hate you. When you don't have principles, all of them do. <laughs> that was actually written in the Daily Telegraph of all papers, but <laughs> uh, if you're interested, I'll tell you afterwards who it was. Good politics involves leadership and persuasion. These are the political skills, the political lessons passed down from generation to generation that, slumped, that seemed to have slipped away from Labor. At the federal election, the pundits lamented that they couldn't grab onto whatever it was Labor was arguing for because it seemed to change from day to day, hour to hour. Labor seems to have developed this habit of dipping our toe in the water and then pulling it out again when we find that the water's either too hot or too cold. Labor needs to lead, to stand up for what's right, regardless of whether it's popular. And then we have to take the time to persuade and to convince voters that we've made the right decisions and we've made it in their interests. Now, to make those arguments, we need to be connected with the people that we're talking to. Traditionally, Labor's had an advantage over the Conservatives because we had a base that was built on two foundation stones, the union movement and the party branches. Through these structures, Labor leaders had a direct link to the people that we were elected to represent. We had a link to the people that would hold us to account. It's an indictment on all of us in the Labor Party that we've allowed our very foundations to decay to the extent that they have. Party reform is not an esoteric argument about where motions should be directed and which positions should go to a vote of which segments of the membership. Party reform should be driven by a fundamental desire to, for the party to genuinely connect, communicate and listen to local communities, local workers and local families. We need to embrace reforms that give a louder voice to party members because hearing what they have to say will help us prosecute our arguments more effectively with the broader community. But as a party, Labor needs to be open to new avenues of engagement. New technologies that provide increased opportunities for us to communicate with voters. But they, but they also challenge our traditional power structures and if we are to take them to their fullest, they will require us to cede control of debates. My view is we have to embrace this as a positive, not shut it down because it's difficult, it's hard or sometimes it even makes us uncomfortable. My view is the same goes for broadening our dialogue with groups like GetUp and the Sydney Alliance. These are organisations that mobilise and organise community organisations and groups of people of a like mind around issues and campaigns. We don't have to and we won't always agree with them, but we do have to engage with them. These conversations and forums will help us inform our policies and strengthen our ability as a party to gain the ground we've lost. We have to be prepared to engage the community in a longer term conversation for change. In Australia and in New South Wales, there's no one answer to the Labor Party's problems. But having the courage of our convictions, being prepared to argue for those convictions and working to reconnect within and outside our traditional party structures are essential to the mix. The Labor Party has always been the party of reform. We have achieved great things. And we've reformed in ways that we've delivered on our values and most importantly, for the people who have relied on us. I don't believe all hope is lost, although there's been plenty of seats that were lost on March 27. I wouldn't have taken this job on as leader of Labor in New South Wales if I didn't believe in Labor's enduring ability to rebuild, reform and reconnect with our community. And that's why I'm really pleased to be here today. Thank you.